So far in this course, we've talked a lot about derivatives. So in fact, just to review here, you have a power rule. You have x cubed, three comes down front, subtract so one, and you get the derivative here. What we're gonna be talking about in this chapter is going back the other direction. We're talking about starting with the derivative and going back to the original function. In order to do that, we need what's called an antiderivative. So here's the definition. A function, this is capital letter F, is an antiderivative of, of lowercase f on the interval if, if you take the derivative of capital letter F, if you get the original one that you started with, that means that this is called your uh, antiderivative. Okay, so we use capital letters to indicate the antiderivative there. So what this looks like is if f prime of x equals 3x squared, this is a notation that we're going to be using to indicate antiderivatives. Okay, this is an, called an integrand or integral symbol. So if we start with the derivative here and we take the antiderivative, we get this. So basically, capital letter F is going to be considered an antiderivative because if I take the derivative of x cubed, I get back to what was originally inside here, which is 3x squared. That's basically how it works. So you're going in reverse. You're starting from this one, going back to the original one. Now, let's take a look at a couple examples here. If I have f of x is x cubed plus 2, and I want to take the derivative of that, I get 3x squared also. That's the same as, as this original one. Well, what if I have x cubed plus a general constant c and I take the derivative? I also get 3x squared. So notice that I'm getting the same exact derivative for all of these, even though they're different problems. I had x cubed by itself plus 2 plus c. So the question is, well, how do you know if you go from here back to the original, how do you know what that original c value is? Well, the thing is you actually don't know what it is unless they provide you with some other information. We'll talk about those problems later in this section. They're called initial value problems that will allow you to find the value c. But if they don't give you any information and you're just doing this part here, the integral of 3x squared, we don't know uh, what the actual original constant was. So in fact, what we have to do is we have to just put a plus c on our answer and leave your answer as that point. We don't know what that c value actually is, so we leave it that way. So that's, this is technically the correct way that you should be writing this. Whenever you do an integral of something, you should always be putting a plus c. If you don't have any other numbers or information given, you always want to use plus c, and then if they provide you with that information, then you could find that later on. What we're talking about next now is going into antiderivative formulas. So the first one we're going to talk about is how do we derive the one for the power rule. If we start with x cubed, bring the power down and get to here, I want to go from here and go back to the original one. Well, basically I'm doing the opposite step. Normally I would subtract one from that power, but instead I'm going to add one to that power. And if I divide it by the new power, that'll cancel out the 3 and it'll allow me to get x cubed. So actually this right here is going to be one of our first formulas that we'll have. So I'm going to put that one on the board along with some other ones. Okay, so here's some antiderivative formulas. This is the one we were just talking about. When we had uh, x to the, to get to x to the third, we talked about adding one divided by the new power. So we're making it generally, if you have x to the n, then what you do is you raise the power by one, divide by the new power, and don't forget to add the c. Now, this only works if your n is not equal to negative 1, because if your n is negative 1, that means you're dividing by 0. That actually is the case right here. So if you have the integral of 1 over x, that would be the same thing as x to negative 1. However, that has a special derivative. If you have the integral of 1 over x dx, the antiderivative is going to be natural log of the absolute value of x uh, plus c. So we have these two these situations set where you're you have x raised to any integer, we know how, what the antiderivative is going to be. Now here's a couple other properties that we have that goes along with this. If you have zero, so we're doing the antiderivative of zero or the integral of zero, you're just going to get a constant there. Why? Because if I take a constant and take the derivative, I'm going to get back to zero again. So that's the antiderivative will give you c. If you have a, uh, a k by itself, just a number, like an integral of 2 dx, something like that, then what happens is you get an x that comes back. 
Technically how that works is it's a variation of this formula right here. This is technically x to the zero power. Raise the power by one, divide by new power, you'll get x to the one over one, which is why you get an x there for that one. And here's a couple other properties working with integrals. We're gonna talk about these and kind of uh, prove these more uh, later when we get into more of the theory about this, but right now I just wanna give these to you. If you have uh, k times f of x, you can move the constant out front and then do the antiderivative with whatever you have left inside there. And also if you have two separate f and g uh, functions, instead of doing the whole thing combined, you could split these up and do that uh, separately and do two different integrals. So now we've talked about these, let's look at a couple more antiderivative formulas, specifically for some trig functions. Now well, here's some trig antiderivatives. So these are all uh, formulas. If you're starting with cosine and you're taking the antiderivative, you get sine. Now why does that work? Because if you take the derivative of all these on the right hand side, you're gonna get all these inside the integral on the left hand side. That's, we're just doing the opposite. So normally, you, if I wanted to take just this part and find the derivative, I would do derivative of sine is cosine of kx, but then don't forget you multiply by the derivative of the inside. The k would come out there, would be canceled by the k here. So that's why that would give you the, uh, if taking the derivative of this one, we'll just get you the cosine on the inside there. So all of them are gonna work exactly the same way. If I take derivative of all these, I'm gonna get all these inside here. So these are all the different ones. I'm doing the antiderivative of sine. I gotta put a negative there on that one. For secant squared, if I'm starting with secant squared, I'll go back to tangent. If I have secant tangent, both of these with kx, I have a one over k, this secant I'll be left with here, kx plus c. And again, remember we're putting c's on all these whenever you're doing the antiderivative with no other numbers that are given here. For cosecants, you're gonna get a negative here, negative cotangent. Cosecant cotangent, you'll get negative cosecant. So all these antiderivatives, these are formulas that you should know. And the more practice that you have with these, they're gonna become more familiar, but especially for those of you going on to second semester calculus, you need to memorize all these because when, you, when you're in uh, Calc 2, they're gonna expect you to know this automatically. You don't wanna keep checking back formulas. You wanna be comfortable uh, with knowing how these work. Now let's take a look at some inverse trig antiderivatives and we'll also take a look at one for exponential function. Here's our three antiderivatives for the inverse trig functions. We're just gonna focus on these three. So if we start with something that looks like this, then automatically you can turn it into this one. So the antiderivative of all this, we get this one right here. All right, so again, the reason why that works is because if you start with this side, take the derivative, that's exactly what you're gonna get inside the integral sign. So we have our three here that you can see. This one does not have a square root on it. This is one plus k squared, x squared. Turns into your inverse tangent. And then this one down here will turn into your inverse secant. Notice that all these have plus c on it also. This last one is one that involves exponential functions. So I have a raised to the kx taking the antiderivative, and you're gonna get this formula as a result. One over k l and a, all this is gonna be a constant. That's all being multiplied by a raised to the kx plus c. And this only works if your a is greater than zero and your a is not equal to one. So now that we've talked about all the different formulas, the future videos in this section will just be example problems talking about how you use all these different formulas.